What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we're going to look at weekly charts of all of the indices and we'll also look at the VIX, Bitcoin, and the ARK ETF. So first up, let's take a look at a weekly chart of the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So just a quick reminder, every candlestick on this chart of SPY represents one entire week's worth of price action. And I am filming this in the middle of the week, so we don't yet have the close on this week's candle but I don't think it's necessary for what we're going to be looking at. So the first thing to note, just zooming out here, is we are clearly in a downtrend on the weekly chart of lower highs and lower lows. And the last thing we saw happen was a very impulsive bounce off of a rising 200 weekly simple moving average. Now I define a secular bull market as any market that has price action over a rising 200 weekly moving average. And right now we still see SPY above that level. However, that doesn't mean we throw all costs to the wind and go extremely bullish in a bear market because we are still in a downtrend and as you can tell we are currently getting rejected from the weekly 20 simple moving average also if you draw a trend line from the bottom of the march 2020 lows and you connect it to the june 2022 lows you can see that we did break down below that trend line and come back up near that trend line and we are currently seeing a rejection from that level so in the short term, it definitely looks like we could be getting ready for another lower high, lower low situation. And we also did hit the 50% retracement of the entire bull market off of the 2020 lows, which was that level around SPY 349. So that strong bounce off of the 50% retracement and the 200 weekly simple moving average could be coming to a close and we could be seeing price action coming back down to retest those levels. Now the rising 200 weekly moving average on SPY is going to be that support zone around 361, and the 50% retracement is where we bounced from last time is going to be a retest of the level at 349. So if we continue to get rejected and SPY stays down below 380, we are very likely going to test these levels very soon in the very near future, especially as we go into midterm volatility. So to the downside, continue to expect lower prices while SPY is getting rejected from SPY 390, and that is going to be that retest of 361 and then 349. And if we continue lower, we could see this bear market getting into a secular bear market, which will then start the descent down towards SPY 318, which is our 0.618 Fibonacci retracement level from the March 2020 bull market. So as you can tell, this is definitely a market that is looking very weak ever since we started the year 2022, and we have given back a lot of those bull market gains already. So on SPY, I continue to tell you the greatest risk level for this bear market is going to be this risk level below 390. And while SPY is below that level, we are very likely still in this bear market. Now, if for any reason we see a reversal and SPY starts breaking back over 390, then we're going to be looking for a test of this downtrending resistance trend line. And that is the resistance trend line that currently defines this bear market. And that is going to require SPY to break over 410. So we're bearish while SPY is below 390. And if SPY gets above 390, then we'll be looking for a strong rejection from this resistance trend line. We need to take this day by day and week by week. And right now, there's just no reason to be overly bullish because we're seeing a high volume rejection from a very critical resistance area. So know these levels to the downside if this rejection on high volume continues, which is going to be that support level at 361 and 349. If we continue to break down and we continue to make lower lows, we are very likely going to eventually reach capitulation. And that is very likely just going to be a waterfall wave of selling down towards that price target at SPY 318, or at least the 2020 highs before the crash, which is around 338. So there is definitely going to be a lot of downward pressure with a strong rejection on the weekly chart. So do be very careful and make sure you're managing your risk. And even if you're shorting this market, you remember that in bear markets, you can still get very strong counter trend rallies. So you always need to manage risk no matter which side of the trade you're on. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Q's weekly chart, we could see the triple Q's are in a very clear downtrending channel and the triple Q's did not even make it back up to the weekly 20 simple moving average before they started to see a high volume rejection on increased selling around that level at 284. As you can tell, the triple Q's are below a rising 200 weekly simple moving average, so they are definitely looking a lot weaker than the S&P 500. The last bounce we had was off of the 61.8% retracement of the bull market from the March 2020 lows, and then we did start to see a high volume rejection before we got back over that level at 287. So there is definitely a very heavy market in the triple Qs as we continue to see lower highs and lower lows. 
So do remember if we break down below 258, that is going to be a very bearish breakdown and we're very likely going to continue to flush to the downside which means we could see the triple Q's coming back to the 2020 highs before the crash around 234. So continue to expect lower highs and lower lows as long as we're in this bear market. And as you can tell, the triple Q's have been one of the leaders to the downside because they have started a lot of the selling pressure. And if you go from the highs down to the lows, they were down about 37% year to date. So it's a very volatile bear market. And that is why we've been getting so many counter trend rallies because remember volatility does work in both directions but those counter trend rallies have done nothing to break over the critical resistance trend lines. And that is why we continue back into this bear market after every rally. On the Dow Jones weekly chart, you can see the Dow Jones was the first index to try to break out of the bear market. And we did try back in August yet again as well, but we continue to find resistance and sellers at that level. And right now we are starting to get another high volume rejection from that resistance trend line. Now, the interesting part about the Dow Jones is we now have two weekly gaps to the downside that have not yet been filled with the first one being this level right around 311 and then this level down here right around 285. We know gaps typically get filled, especially on weekly charts. So there is a good chance if we continue to see this rejection from this resistance area around 328, that we are going to see selling pressure down to at least fill the gap at 311. And as you can tell, if we continue lower, we also have that rising 200 weekly simple moving average at 300. So the Dow Jones is by far looking the strongest, and that is because the tech sector is the majority of the selling, and the Dow Jones does not have tech stocks in its index. This is the top 30 industrial companies that move the Dow Jones, and those companies are just not quite as beat up as some of the other sectors. So as you can see, the Dow Jones is still constrained by the resistance trend line that defines its bear market, and we do have plenty of gaps to fill to the downside, which could lead to more selling pressure. Now, the other thing to note about the Dow Jones is that they are above a rise 20 weekly simple moving average so you also need to watch for support right around 315. On the Russell 2000 IWM weekly chart you can see the small caps are currently trading just below the weekly 20 simple moving average and the weekly 200 simple moving average. If you connect a trend line from the March 2020 lows to the June 2022 lows we are currently above that trend line after seeing a little bit of a double bottom off of this level around 165. Now on the daily chart, IWM still has a valid double bottom price target, which could send it to higher prices. But as you can tell, the resistance trend line for the IWM bear market is going to have strong resistance at 188, which is also the daily double bottom price target. So we are still in a bear market in the small caps until we clearly break back over this resistance trend line above 188. And we are going to continue lower for the next leg lower in the bear market if we start to lose this support trend line around 174. So watch that critical level at 188 and the critical support at 174. And keep in mind, a lot of the indexes are all going to move together. And so far, they're all seeing high volume selling near resistance. On the VIX weekly chart, you can see the VIX remains elevated for the majority of the year, and we can see the VIX has been forming higher lows. And right now, the VIX is currently forming lower highs, so it is starting to look like it's starting to wedge into a triangle. Now, the VIX represents fear in the market, and even though we are seeing selling across the indices, we have not yet seen a huge spike in the VIX, so that is definitely a divergence we will want to pay close attention to. If the market was about to crash and go much lower, you would expect to see a spike in the VIX but the VIX is still elevated while it's above 24, so it is still going to remain a volatile market until the VIX crushes back down below 20. So watch the VIX closely because it'll usually tell you how much fear is in the market. And right now, while we have fear in the market, we don't have those extreme levels of fear that we have when the VIX was getting in the upper 30s. And then if we do reach a full-blown capitulation, we will expect to see the VIX spiking above 40. On the Bitcoin weekly chart, we can see that Bitcoin has been building a very strong foundation of support just below 19,000. And right now we are currently still trading outside the resistance trendline, but we have not seen yet any impulsive bullish price action. We need to see Bitcoin breaking all the way back above 25,000 and then starting to make a run at that resistance level just below 32,000. So while Bitcoin is well within its bear market, it is still holding support very strongly and it has not yet been very volatile like we're seeing in the stock market because while we did have this very large bear market plunge, Bitcoin has been very stable around 19,000 ever since. Now, if Bitcoin were to lose that support at 19,000, this does look like a weekly bear flag, 
which means we could easily get down to Bitcoin levels of 12,000, which is going to be another very critical support level from that resistance breakout. Now, keep in mind, I'm not saying Bitcoin is going to 12,000, but that is going to be a very valid price target if we see weekly closes below this level right around 18,700. Now to the upside, look for that very strong resistance, which is going to be just below 25,000, which is also going to be right around that 200 weekly simple moving average. Currently, we're seeing selling from a negatively sloping 20 weekly moving average, so we're definitely seeing plenty of resistance just below 22,000. On the weekly chart of the ARK-K ETF, we can see that profitless growth companies are still in the gutter, and they are currently still sitting around this weekly support base of 35. Now you can see ARK-K is in an extremely powerful bear market, still below a negatively sloping weekly 20 simple moving average and well below the 200 weekly moving average. So this is a very powerful bear market that I don't expect to see ending anytime soon, especially with how hawkish the Fed has been, and that is just not an environment that is going to be good for companies in this ETF. So there's no reason to be bullish on this ETF until we can start seeing a break back over the weekly 20 simple moving average and break out of this downtrend. So jumping back over to S&P 500, I wanted to go over this macro view of the weekly charts because it's at a very critical pivot going into the end of the year of whether or not we are going to hold above this very very critical support which is the rising 200 weekly simple moving average or are we going to slice right through it and go into a secular bear market keep in mind nobody knows for sure where the stock market is going but it is very clear looking at this weekly chart that there is just no reason to be bullish at this time because we are still well within this bear market and we are currently seeing a high volume rejection from a very critical resistance area. So if you're an investor, you can continue to accumulate, but make sure you understand that there is no way of knowing whether or not this market is near the bottom, because if we go all the way from SPY 380 down to 318, that is going to be a very emotional roller coaster if you don't have any risk management strategies and you just continue to throw money into the market. So make sure you have a plan and make sure your plan is allowing you to stay objective so that you don't get overly emotional because in a bear market, if you have the expectation of lower highs and lower lows, you're going to be much better prepared for the market you're currently in. Don't have unrealistic expectations of a bull market coming out of nowhere and don't get FOMO every time you see a bear market relief rally. This is a downtrend until it's not, which means it's a bear market until it's not, and while we are above the rising 200 weekly simple moving average, we are in a downtrend, so we need to respect the current trend. So make sure you're using great risk management, be patient, and be disciplined, which means you're following your trade plan exactly how you wrote it up, and there should be no variation from your trade plan based on emotions. Also, don't forget I have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that only trades the ETFs TQQ and SQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. If you want to learn more about Bank or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. If you're looking to become a better price action trader, consider joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, where you will get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis. You can find out how to join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.